Welcome everyone to another security debriefing here, previously weekly on the more main channel. Let, let me know in the comments below whether you miss those uh, weekly security and other IT updates. I wanted to talk about this for a long time. We have already talked a couple of times, but today a little bit more distilled because uh, lo and behold, all right, I'm also starting, starting with the wrong slide. Um, Security issues, right? You have already seen the teaser there. SpaceX also at the end. But let's first start with Linux kernel vulnerabilities and latest. Uh, so this is just yesterday out, today out, Linux kernel, systemd and curl. And uh, one thing here, for example, uh, CVE 2021, uh, 2021 turning hex 0, 0, 000 dollars. This was already, so why is this news worthy? This was already some months ago, maybe two, two or three weeks. Um, 15 year old, so not like, why do we need to change dramatically the way we design, write, and architect software? 15 freaking years old, hiding thousand eyes there, Linux kernel review and stuff. Heap out of bounds, recurring theme here, my fun and the lack thereof. See, they got this <coughs> lovely language there from back in the inter ethics. Um, vulnerability in the Linux net filter, powerful enough to bypass all modern security mitigations like uh, randomized kernel address space and so on. Achieve kernel code execution breaks a Kubernetes pod of isolation. It's a KCTF cluster and one ten thousand dollars for charity. Uh, Google will match and double the donations to twenty thousand. Um, so this is not a one-time thing. I called this out again. Breaking news, IT security debriefings there on the Moment channel. Um, just. Has this stopped? No, of course not. And maybe I should actually get into info, InfoSec and become much more wealthy millionaire through security, right? Or the legacy of. So this was, I think, last month or so. But then today, right? Or actually like, yeah, today, yesterday, um, or if you are on the zero day kernel security mailing list, maybe some days longer, um, even more crazy, right? Um, CVE 2021-33, also yeah, how many CVEs, right, with all the PHP and all the other DLIPC and Windows shared numbering and stuff, 33,909. Sequoia, a local privilege escalation will be in the Linux file system layer and if you are an IT administrator and stuff, you better go out and update your kernel because it is out right now the latest and greatest security vulnerabilities for you to update and um, so this one is um, a crazy one qualis research team they discovered size t oh, yeah. in, <laughs> you don't even usually necessarily need out of bounds use after free um, and null pointer de reference and stuff uh, sometimes it can be as simple in the super secure, of course not, language that is the size T2int conversion vulnerability in the Linux kernel file system layer. It doesn't need to be network, Bluetooth, wireless, um, or stuff. Yeah, file system layer, VFS, virtual file system switch, affecting most, yeah, well, most I would actually say probably all, right? Why, why do they write most? Maybe they want to legally be on the safe side. I would probably upgrade that to all. Linux up well, yeah, not all, uh, most since uh, AKA right, this bug probably introduced only 10, some five years ago, or 10. Any unprivileged user can gain root privileges on a vulnerability host, uh, host by exploiting this vulnerability in the default configuration. Um, this is uh, interface uh, layered architecture for access of file systems. Um, and uh, do we have here, so disclosure, okay, whatever, proof of concept. So technical details. Linux kernel sequence file interface produces virtual files that contain sequences of records. For example, many files in PROC are sequence file records are usually line 
lines. Each record must fit into a sequence file buffer, which is therefore enlarged as needed. By doubling its size at line 242, sequence buffer allocate there. It's a simple wrap around kv malloc. And um, the size multiplication is not vulnerable in itself. Um, unsigned 64 integer, AMD 64. 64. Um, but unfortunately, uh, size is also passed to a function whose size argument is an integer. Also, yeah, the devil is in the details, right? Recurring theme. Um, code is difficult and stuff and details. For example, show mount info uh, record there in proc self mount info, which calls the entry pass there, prepend. As a result, an unprivileged local attacker creates mount, mounts and deletes a deep directory structure whose total pass length exceeds one gigabyte. Yes, of course, you need to get a little bit, as usual, creative. If the attacker opens and reads proc self mount, then uh, sequence or read iterator as a two gigabyte buffer. Amazing stuff, right? In your kernel, single address space, monolithic stuff, recurring theme by. <laughs> Since decades, since over decades, since 15 years, I recommend already microkernel um, that I wish were more popular because then you don't have a single address space thing where all these drivers live in. But yeah, you guessed it. And um, then um, the call was empty two gigabyte buffer, um, two gigabyte in size, and Buffer length is therefore negative int, int minimum minus two gigabyte points to an offset two gigabyte below the v malloced buffer, and uh, yeah, can uh, therefore um, place their arbitrary stuff. And this is not all right. I just a quick summary, um, just as an example, because otherwise without summary, with, without a living. Um, living documentation here of uh, decades of vulnerabilities, not only in Windows, but Linux, BSDs, Mac OS, certainly, or, uh, and Android with Linux base. Similar, earlier this year, Epic Escape, case study of KVM breakout. If, if you thought, yeah, we just put everything in virtual machines, first of all, then the content of your virtual machines can still or is still vulnerable to most attacks. But also, <laughs> Epic Escape there, KVM breakout, I think this was new this year, at least there's 2001 is a date somewhere. Uh, maybe I should have checked that and not only from the head of my, where do they have a date? Say I had 2000 actually data. And yeah, so this probably was June 2021, at least according to the URL. All right, there's also inverse stuff, uh, usability fail too. Anyway, so yeah, this is also pretty new, June 29th, um, at least when they published that. and. Um, KVM de facto standard for hypervisors is Linux based cloud environments. And um, first public write up of uh, Z Escape there, previously assigned CVE 2021, affects kernel versions 5.10. Although, yes, so not so many, so that was just a, a recent bug there of discovered five months later. But um, long story short, load KVM uh, virtualization breakout there. Um, code base at the work discovered quickly introduced AD, so A A AMD SVM um, something something nested SVM and uh, function fetches yes and yeah complex x86 is complex right you guessed it reasons unknown to them contains a bit that enables disabled interception of VM runs so yeah more devil is in the details and um, at the end becomes an Virtual machine breakout there. Do they have there some nice uh, something, something, uh, something? Yeah, details, details, more details. But this is not all right. Also, uh, this year, this is only the kernel. Is if we replace um, the kernel with some more potentially formally verified and preferably not written in C, at least C with some more surrounding sugar, if not. Rust or whatever. Um, again, preferably formally verified, as some microkernels are allegedly currently. User space, right? You init system init 2021 33,910 denial of service stack exhaustion in system DP81. Here also Qualys research. 
And this is also a crazy one. I think it's also involved actually like monitoring yeah, complexity. I remember this mount info we had like probably here, right? Mount info here um, turns out you yeah, can also exploit that in systemd because systemd monitors and parses the content of procs have mount info, what could possibly go wrong and passes enough mount points. So if an attacker user passes enough mount points, which uh, unit name from pass, passes that to unit name pass escape. And um, as a result, the total path length, um, also yeah, string dub A because C handling and strings, amazing stuff. Um, again, I said this before, probably 50% of most C bugs could be avoided with a proper C string first class implementation and not this zero terminated stuff. Um, but yeah, allocates memory on the stack via alloc A, um, not in the heap via malloc. And as a result, if the total pass length of the mount point, so this time you don't need two gigabytes, this time eight megabyte should be enough for everyone. Default of our limit stack at least. System D crashes with the segmentation fault that also crashes the entire operating system because that is the way Unix are designed. Totally amazing stuff. The irony is in our T2, um, fun fact, second stage bootloader and initRD, um, I think first I did this in the second stage installer, but then initRD. Um, if the initRD fails, I have there a little bit Easter egg, the debug printout because the Linux, the Linux kernel prints out uh, like, oops, something kill um, PID1 or something of that sort, we print there in T2, um, oops, uh, system didn't boot, didn't mount, whatever, something of that sort, but I don't panic or something of that sort, right? Give you a shell for some, if you are lucky, if your USB modules are loaded or you have a keyboard or serial console stuff, you can do some debugging, right? So yeah, system D, if you're wondering, yeah, but higher level stuff probably uh, got, got to be fine, right? Yeah, uh, to your, probably not to your surprise, curl also out like today. Uh, 7.78, 78, 5 in 1, whatever, maybe 5 in 1 security vulnerability or something. And yeah, bug fixes and stuff because programming is difficult. I'm certainly aware of that. I also don't write bug free code and just wish like better languages, right? Not so many security vulnerabilities. And so, multiple CVEs, right? Uh, maybe that is why they call this, not sure. If I've not counted that, but could be, ah, uh, yeah, 5, um, yeah, 5 separate security advisories. Maybe this is why they call this five and one, <laughs> maybe potentially. So yeah, also curl developed a long time. Fun fact in T2, our Linux distribution, um, this is a Rock Linux heri uh, heritage. We previously in Rock Linux 1 in 1998, we used wget, so GNU wget thing there, what you used. And we switched to curl really, really early when maybe curl was a version one or something like probably nearly 20 years ago, so happy anniversary there. Um, because Curl was more flexible, had more options and more support and stuff. But yeah, fast forward nearly 20 years or so later, um, still, and this is also, you would think, and this is also what I try to bring over some new thoughts and ideas and um, uh, thinking here, think different to this channel, because you would think, similar to what I said pre previously, the software converges like you you start with the software and it's like full of box and then like over time you reach you um, uh, reach uh, zero bucks or so but of course new features right HTTP2 or HTTP3 and speedy and, and whatnot and also the Linux kernel recurring theme here from me criticism of the Linux kernel ever changing. When they can change something, they change something, in my opinion, mostly pointless. Like even APIs, some unused argument, removing that, potentially breaking stuff, um, or some argument mostly unused except on PowerPC and breaking only PowerPC and stuff. And um, like P3 or SG Obtain here on live on this channel, right? Um, or Risk 5 and so on. Um, and yeah, if we constantly add new features, I mean, first of all, curl, um, maybe the C in curl stands for C, I guess, C URL, or maybe I should actually fact check that, but correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, um, even if it, do if, if it doesn't, it's written in C and your yeah, recurring theme, right? We have 
all the kernel user space, Xox server, Valent, um, even parts of Chromium and Firefox, um, well, most, most of C++, but probably some C, at least on libraries like this. And we got to stop this, right? 20 years here for me in this industry, and I'm sick and tired of that, right? Sure, people become millionaire with vulnerabilities, especially if they sell them on the gray market for good money. But we need to stop this, right? What is my what what is my point of this video, right? Of the recurring theme of stuff is insecure, of new thirty thousands security vul vulnerability. Um, we need to got to change this, right? Imagine we would do other stuff, infrastructure like drinking water, and it would con constantly be contaminated. We also got to change it, right? Like not leaded pipes and better filters and stuff. Um, if not the usual car and roads or if your car would constantly break and stuff. Uh, you also buy like from, from companies where the car is not constantly in, in repair, right? Um, or airplanes. I mean, if, if airplanes would constantly crash, we certainly would not let them fly. And uh, yeah, so my point is we got a freaking need to change um, software architecture and with ransomware um, running rampant all over the place from universities to police stations and car manufacturers and uh, Iran's nuclear enrichment facilities and stuff, or gas pipelines uh, there in the US and stuff, and threatening to switch off the electric grid and gas grid and, and stuff. We got to freaking need to change that, right? And um, so yeah, five vulnerabilities here, just to uh, finish that sort here, wrong content via Metalink. And some of these vulnerabilities, as um, I saw already, pointed out on Twitter, I think four of these five, five vulnerabilities are pure logic bugs, so not, not, not even C bounds and stack and stuff. But if you write equivalent code in Rust, it would also be buggy um, due to probably, if you look into the detail at least, um, I heard uh, Metalink download sends credentials. So if you Download the MetaLink file using credentials. A subsequent download file mentions in example also gets the same credentials. So yeah, logic bug, um, not crashing, not heap, not stack, not out of bounds. Pure logic bug. If you write similar code that is memory safety free, also bug in Rust, which is yeah, just switching to Rust does solve a lot. Not ha personally happy as the most with this language for quite some reasons, but that is another story. Sure, Rust already magnitude better than C. Not the most amazing readable to me, but yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, logic bugs, you can still Rust stuff will not be bug free. And if you look into Rust projects, even Alacrity, the fastest hardware isolated terminal emulator, each release fixing crash there, fixing crash there, even Alacrity. The irony is RXVT for me, I don't remember crashing for 10 years. Alacrity, the fastest terminal emulator written in Rust, crashed multiple times on me. So yeah, so much to memory, safety, code and rust and stuff, although probably it was using crashing in unsafe areas, right? Telnet stack content, disclosure again, possible embarrassing security flaw in the long times, so like yeah, at least they're honest. And when shipped with 777, announced their flaw in Telnet code. Um, but yeah, know what the fix was, incomplete and plain wrong, and in the original program actually remained for a certain set of inputs. It's like, do you had one job and yeah, C and Coding is stuff and C is more difficult. And actually, you've seen me on this channel, I can actually master C quite well, but I would not write anything substantial or also I would say I am pretty good or very good in C. I would not use it for anything, right? Because um, I certainly know the shortcomings and the um, problems that come with it and I would not even similar to Felix from, Felix from, from Leitner, they are a famous German blogger who says security researcher, even he says he doesn't want to work on critical infrastructure because um, he doesn't want that people die due to his code and it's like yeah he's even writing C right um, and his C code is not even the most readable for that reason but yeah people can die right in your self-driving car or airplane um, SSL cert, uh, mix up in secure transport, macOS native TLS library, secure transport application can ask for, yeah, whatever. But this is not all. Also in Windows recently, um, Kevin writes here, oh dear, need to validate uh, themselves, but seems like Microsoft has 
goofed up and made the SAM database user passwords accessible in non-admins in Windows 10. So as like logic bugs, uh, maybe see, maybe some scripting, who knows what, whatever, something. But yeah, that, that I think was confirmed. So yeah, happy Windows uh, user can read password database um, and escalate. Conclusion, update Windows 10 or 11 system protection enabled default vulnerable, amazing logic bugs. And last but not least, I had it open already in the beginning. Um, you will not believe, maybe you read this already, this is from last year or so. Yeah, June 3rd, 2020. Um, I wanted, to, I had this on my to-do for a long time, maybe I make a dedicated video, but SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, um, which flew NASA astronauts and stuff, is powered by liquid oxygen, obviously, and rocket grade kerosene and Linux and JavaScript and Chromium. Um, crazy stuff, I would not fly with this rocket. Um, because as you've seen the track record here, vulnerabilities, bugs and stuff, and even this is a problem, right? You can test it, test it, test it, and then some different sensor data, some different runtime, some whatever um, similar stuff. Or um, if it's running Linux, I wonder how redundant this is. Certainly it has some form of redundancy, but if it's not like hardware redundant on the CPU level, but allegedly running commodity x86 processes here, crazy stuff. Dragon Space spacecraft runs Linux with flight software written in C++, at least not C. Um, and the touchscreen interface rendered in Chromium and JavaScript, like what the freaking heck drugs are they handing out of there? I mean, I, I've seen Elon Musk um, on drugs. Um, oops. But um, yeah, that the engineers also get the same stuff now. No, I mean, how, in, I mean, what is wrong with people, right? And this is the, the quintessence, that is the silver lining of the story of the sad state of IT, of code, of security, um, not in the, only in the Linux kernel, but the Mac OS kernel, the Windows kernel, certainly with Windows out there, 90% or 82% market share, whatever, all the ransomware, mostly obviously targeting Windows there, car production facilities, pipeline facilities, infrastructure, and um, how on God's name on this earth can they freaking write a touch screen interface with Chrome? I would not even use this for a d digital signing. Have you walked past your public transport display in Germany or France or elsewhere, I guess, and it's like displaying this website cannot, can't be displayed. It's like, yeah. This kind of level of like, yeah, flying your spaceship and then I see it coming already in a year or two. Um, mark this date and this video and it's not funny, right? People's astronauts' life depends on that. And then the bloody touchscreen interface rendered with Chromium. It's like, yeah, out of memory in the bloody Chromium tab. I hope they uh, have an out of memory killer there and restarting this bloody Chromium interface. And JavaScript, and I think Node.js, um, I read somewhere, um, but uh, something, but uh, allegedly, hopefully, maybe, as they write here, if something goes wrong with interface, astronauts have physical buttons to control the space of spacecraft at last. Um, so yeah, crazy stuff. I mean, and the, the irony is some people are proud of that, but I am horrified by that, right? This is a difference on Reddit, Linux fanboys, Yay, Linux in space. I mean, Linux in space is certainly cool, but not for you freaking, freaking flight controls. I would not even use it for an airplane, um, and let alone a spacecraft, for God's sake. Um, what was previously used, not saying that it was perfect, but um, previously NASA used special systems, Harley of high order assembly language shuttle, real time aerospace. Programming language compiler cross compiler for avionics applications. Um, this assembly sounds a little bit frightening, although you probably would expect that this is well, although it was obviously the 1970s, so that was a different time of hey, we can still do assembly. I'm not saying this assembly in, in that name frightens me um, a little bit though. Um, maybe I I've not looked entirely in, into that detail there. Maybe it sounds more assembly than it looks. I think I looked into that uh, sometime, I think that here. Um, it's like, yeah, I have to say it doesn't look so 
for example, the statement, so yeah, I mean, okay, x equals a square plus b square, i here is uh, x equals like, yeah, what would be written single format, nah. I mean, yeah, at least you don't have memory access in there. I, I don't know, maybe it's amazing, maybe it's not, but the point is, um, also keep stuff stupid simple, right? The problem is with nowadays stuff, like here with the SpaceX stuff, it's, in my opinion, and maybe SpaceX, well, I mean, they have some access, sure, I don't want to say they don't have some success, right? But I'm from the outside, the sheer thought that they fly with Linux UI Chromium flight controls is, for me, as an IT expert, computer scientist, horrifying, right? And at least from the outside, I mean, sure, they have physical button overrides, but I mean, what is the freaking point if you have some, it might crash sometimes Chromium Linux UI stuff when you then need button override anyway, because in terms of your bloody Chrome tab crashes or hangs. Um, and the, as seen here on my channel, debugging stuff, right? The stuff is also way too complex, right? The stuff is way too complex for my daily web browsing here. The way more complex and error prone and memory leaking than I would wish for my daily browsing. And then I wouldn't put it in a spaceship control, right? What I would use is a pure minimum, like uh, potentially nowadays even written in Rust certainly, or but also there before Rust there was, was uh, Ada, right? Is Rust a new thing? No, of course. Um, there was Ada even mentioned here in, there was HAL S and HAL G and um, so proposed by NASA space standard ground-based version of HAL named HAL slash G for ground was proposed, but coming emergence of the soon to be named ADA programming language contributed to uh, lack of interest in continuing this work instead. Uh, phase out would be the red final list of which would be selected. And so we had stuff before Rust, right? This is not new. And I have friends in the industry who since 15 years or for over a decade were already using, for example, Haskell and, and other languages. So there have been other languages options like ADA, structural, statically typed, um, object-oriented high-level programming languages, um, extended from Pascal and other languages, and uh, here in uh, uh, designed by maybe first appeared in 1980, 41. So for 40 freaking years, we had safer alternatives. Not saying that R R83 was amazing and perfect, but certainly better for C in most aspects. And uh, Haskell, um, I would certainly not suggest real-time Java, but Haskell and other stuff in nowadays, and the stuff also needs to be simpler, right? In my opinion, it is completely inexcusable to design a space shuttle flight control stuff with Chromium, Node.js, and JavaScript. Um, do they have here Node.js? Uh, I thought it was Node.js, at least JavaScript. Um, the design criteria already needs to be simpler, right? It needs to be, even if Linux-based, although, I mean, even the Linux choice, right? I would, with all the security and latest putting the JIT in there, just in time code generation. I said this before, multiple vulnerabilities already in there. Even the new APIs, right? People applaud putting the next big thing since sliced bread just in time compilation eBPF into the Linux kernel. A horrifying thought for me, right? I want a most minimal microkernel thing that only does the task switching and scheduling and memory and resource management and location and have separate address spaces. So when you're wireless stuff crashes, only the wireless, st wireless stuff crashes or is restarted and doesn't reach all the rest of the kernel. Um, similar to the USB, right? You can not break out of the USB even if there is a bug in there, preferably of course formally verified. Bring me to how should we do this better, right? First of all, probably as far as I have seen, you see for nothing. C should, and this is also the problem, right? As a final thought. Most of this architecture, even in the open source space with curl and libc and 
XML parsing in C and so on. The stuff needs to be unfortunately rewritten, right? The question is, do we need to rewrite all of our architecture because open SSL, right? Vulnerabilities, curl, vulnerabilities, um, the C library, you guessed it, vulnerabilities, not to mention your single address based monolithic Linux kernel, yes, vulnerabilities, um, each week, um, although at least each month. And um, for the spaceship, right? This, in my opinion, should be a formally verified microkernel like SEL4, for example, and then have the UI with a specialized UI library that does preferably also formally verified your rendering of some sliders and UI elements. And how people, and this is also the, the maybe management, I mean, you, you, between the engineers and the management, who is to blame there? I mean, right now it didn't crash yet, um, the, thankfully. Um, who's to blame there that I've not been sitting there in this conference room in this design decisions, whether the management, maybe, maybe the engineers even told them, look, we can't use Chromium, I don't know. And the management said, no, I, I'm in love in Chromium. We use that, um, you implement it. I, I don't know whether, but I means someone made this decision um, and in my opinion it's not a very stable, secure and um, sophisticated decision. So for me, I mean certainly there is currently this rewrite everything in Rust movement which yeah has some improvements. I personally, the problem in the open source ecosystem is that I said this before and you probably will hear it a lot of times from me on this channel <laughs> again in the future. We have used C too long. We could since 1998 already use much less error prone C++. Yes, people hate it, called it bloated, but it's not bloated, right? It's just more, more library that all stuff you don't need to use. You don't need to use exception all over the place. You don't need to use runtime type information all over the place. But even if you use containers and strings, it's already reducing your vulnerability, your chance for security vulnerabilities by probably 50%. And last but not least, um, making the code much more readable, right? In my opinion, it's much more readable. Some string plus some plus equals some other string or some string plus some string plus. Everything is more readable than string dub, string talk, string and compare, whatever, um, and so on. Um, and this means because the open source community has produced way too much infrastructure in C, in my opinion, this can no longer I mean as you see in the form of system D and libcurl, we will have vulnerabilities there forever. Especially this is not standing still, right? They add new options, new features, new code. And as you see here, even in libcurl, right, unfortunately, um, stuff was previously partially and incorrectly patched. And um, given that there probably will never be a stable and vulnerability free C and especially with the Linux kernel, right? The problem is people like Linus Torvalds always performance, performance, but performance. In my opinion, what does performance matter when at the end of the day, your company stands still, your data is transferred, all your secrets, all your manufacturing plants deleted, copied, deleted, um, hundreds, thousands, if not millions of restoring backups, make updating, making, stuff more secure and um, yeah firewalls and stuff of course do not prevent everything they only prevent some certain forms of attacks and then the firewalls similar as antivirus have vulnerabilities right because um, they obviously also written in C and C++ but yeah set state of the industry and I call this out because in my opinion this recurring theme of vulnerabilities even you see the Linux kernel not one, but multiple, right? Three, I did I had three prominent plus system D, you could sort of kind of call that kernel taking over there. But otherwise, just the last four weeks, 
Um, I think they were all the last four weeks, right? The last four weeks, three highly prominent, highly vulnerable virtual machine escape file system switch escalation and um, 15 year old out of bonds net filter and these are the best who probably should be able or would think they master C the best C as a language with buffer overflows and memory management right but performance 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 and this is also a misconception right C++ and Rust code can be as performant sometimes with clever algorithms that might be easier to implement because more readable in C++ and Rust maybe even more performant sure a microkernel has more context switching but maybe vector that bundle that I.O. ring that um, I read Google, uh, Rust Redux OS has a Google Summer of Code project for I.O. ring in microkernel space and then maybe most of the performance overhead can be marginally optimized away with modern concepts as I.O. ring and uh, vector system calls and stuff and then I would take a more secure more isolated imagine restartable drivers not some Bluetooth USB or net filter code clobber zero kernel but gradually similar what Minix always also a little bit up and done where I said this before not the most impressed by the yeah C and code quality of Minix but at least ideas and microkernel and concepts of restartable drivers and subsystem right in Linux you have a bug your whole kernel is dead and oops and panicked if not hacked and privilege escalated and microkernel hey hello say hello to restartable subsystems and drivers your graphic driver crashed, restarted. Well, if it's properly written in IOMMU and you can reset it, so. But at least certainly easier than overly complex graphic subsystems. Restart your network driver, restart. Not that it should happen too often, but if you are in a space station or in a production environment, a ro robot and self-walking or flying stuff, because as it stands, I wouldn't use Linux for self-flying drones and caps and airplanes and stuff, but a formally verified microkernel should, certainly should be used there. And then, even if something goes wrong, even hardware-wise, resetting your driver and subsystem. Anyway, we have quite some people tuning in. That is amazing. So that is basically the summary, the sad state of IT industry and with a particular example here on open source because it's just more readable, right? The same problem, of course, persists. I would even say, last but not least, is commercial software better? In my opinion, no. Everything I've seen is usually worse. Everything, what you debug, what leaks, Windows, other commercial software, usually horrible. Often because shows the Linux kernel, not perfect, but at least quite reviewed commercial software even worse because they can hide their skeletons there in their code system git repository basement um, if they even use git um, so yeah commercial software even worse um, in my opinion usually leave in the comments what you see the summary is in my experience from 20 plus years since since I was in school, before university, since I got into IT as a hobby with my friends there when, when I was 12, uh, 14, and 16 and stuff, um, 20 plus years, we need to rewrite this. There is nothing, I would in the meantime, everything I've seen and I run a Linux distribution, right? I can't even sleep anymore with all these bugs and security vulnerabilities. I wouldn't use it for anything too serious. And um, it needs to be written, safer languages, preferably formally verified as much as possible. Yes, it's not easy, but otherwise vulnerabilities and crashes. And last but not least, the question also should be, I'll probably make a dedicated video about this, quite some list of video topic and ideas, but the question is also, should software come with a warranty, right? Usually warranty is always waved away 
Uh, maybe we take an apple. Um, I read this previously. Um, I made a video already previously, uh, Apple, because they have all warranty, right? At least in the App Store stuff. No warranty, you expressly acknowledge and agree that you, and this Apple is not the only one, right? You find similar text in Microsoft Linux distributions, open source software, obviously you don't even freaking pay for that, right? Previous video recurring theme, nobody pays for open source software anyway. Um, and so you buy expensive stuff from Apple, from Microsoft, run a business, right? You base you, well, certainly not I, but some people allegedly base their whole freaking manufacturing business like robots in a car factory and stuff. And then you expressively acknowledge and agree that use of the licensed application at your sole risk to the maximum extent permitted by applicable law, the licensed application and any services Performed and provided by the licensed appli uh, licensed application are provided as it and as available like cloud, right? As available. Sometimes it's not like you can't sue Apple or Microsoft because you cloud or sometimes don't because provided as it and as available with all faults and without warrant with all faults, right? I mean, imagine you buy a car, you buy a car or an airplane or a chainsaw or a peacemaker, whatever you fancy, and you have no warranty, right? This is unsinkable. Imagine you buy anything reasonable technical appliance and you waive all warranties, no warranties. And the question is, should software actually by law be applicable to have a warranty, right? I have so many bugs Apple never fixed, right? on a Mac, on an iPhone, or at Microsoft. Microsoft had so many bugs, I stopped using it in 1996. Right? And imagine on your car, have you ever signed your car purchase and no warranty, you expressly acknowledge and agree that use of your car vehicle at your sole risk, whether the brakes work and the engine explodes and the battery uh, starts a fire, at the maximum extent applicable by the law, probably not in the case of cars, Provided as it, your Tesla provided as it, whether it sometimes drives or goes up in flames or self, you certainly, it's a fun fact, of course, Tesla bringing the self-driving self software to you, right? With a self-driving, self, self of course not, autopilot, of course not, it's not an autopilot, right? It's a lane, fancy lane assist that doesn't even work the best, as far as I've seen, allegedly. And of course, with your autopilot lane assist, you have no warranty and exp imagine driving your car, your self-driving lane assist car with no warranty, expressively acknowledging and agreeing that this licensed application, aka autopilot lane assist 7.3, maximum and as, as available, sometimes it steers and sometimes it doesn't, sometimes, sometimes it brakes, sometimes it, it drives unbraked or accelerates into concrete pillars on the on and exit ramps or trucks I heard on crossings because the camera didn't happen to recognize a white truck right in the in the sunset or stuff because no warranty right and the question is should software have a warranty is that there is a bug in Windows they need to freaking fix it if there is a bug in macOS they need to freaking fix it leave in the comments below and that's mostly it for this video. We had some people tuning in, which is amazing. Leave in the comments below also whether you miss the weekly IT briefings. For me, they become a little bit redundant because it's each week the same security issues, aka what we see here, obviously, right? Leave in the comments below. Maybe I make a poll whether we should pick up on those. It's a little bit repetitive, but maybe some people need a weekly reminder that software is inherently a little bit too insecure. Um, let's see, do we have something interesting in the comments? Um, and if you're interested in this stuff, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Uh, we also try to do some low-level software here, so Patreon, GitHub, YouTube membership, and sponsors and stuff, highly appreciated. Um, Carlos writes, time for more Rust in Linux. Rust, second language pros, making good progress. Um, 
someone doesn't get the hate for raw system D, might just be due to workflow being relying on system D and spawn containers. Well, my criticism in system D is that they also bundle too much stuff. Nothing, I would not have too much against system D per se if they would not add everything in the kitchen sink, if it would just be an init, but they also add their, um, they basically re implemented a lot of stuff like um, NFS client and boot stuff and cryptid home stuff that in my opinion are out of scope, right? In my opinion, system D is kind of like Emacs, everything in the kitchen thing and um, bootloader stuff and even network stuff shouldn't be in there. Mark this video in some years, there will be a full network stack. Maybe even in a decade or two, the Linux kernel will be um, absorbed into systemd. Um, that is a little bit, but in my opinion also, this is similar to microkernel. It should be, we had all the components, not, not that they were amazing, like NFS clients and stuff, but at least they do not belong all in a, a one single. This is, in my opinion, systemd replicates the Linux kernel mistake of putting everything in there, which should, should be a little bit separated. Um, so, yeah, some people wrote similar stuff. Um, Brand writes, future ASICs will be large assortment of specialized processes, coprocessors. Linux is not designed for that. It can hardly do DMA. Yeah, that will be a challenge. There were other microkernel based like Barrelfish, Microsoft uh, ETH Zurich research, I think, of a different um, processor systems. There's certainly a lot of stuff that could be done there. But the problem is also that a lot of this ASIC and coprocessor stuff are not openly documented. So the future is a little bit gray or um, yeah, 50 shades of gray there in terms of not um, like sync Apple AI accelerators and other or even the Apple um, video accelerator, accelerator card is the 999 euro. And similar companies or even yeah, a lot of AI accelerators, of course, the problem is the companies always pretend everything is intellectual property and they don't disclose specifications. So I see in any case for the open source community a huge problem of open source drivers and being able to maintain such uh, systems with different coprocessors. Um, but that is topic for another video. Um, let's see. Um, Anything else still miles better than C for system programming from methods tools can. And uh, William Leslie writes Rust, Spark, ATS. Yeah, and again, as I said, like Ada, Haskell, Haskell, and there are basically 50 languages, right? And the problem is also uh, the computer science in universities, there are solutions, right? Like microkernels and stuff. And then, but Linus Torvalds, but performance, performance, performance. and nobody has done it or not like successfully. In my opinion, sure, QNX was highly successful, L4 somewhat successful, um, the, but the problem is often also drivers, right? And that is, of course, sure, Lin uh, Linux is also successful because it supports many architectures and drivers. This is, of course, a problem. If you rewrite everything with a microkernel, you need drivers, right? You can potentially reuse some from Linux, but this is also a problem, right? Also with complex hardware. Hardware is now so complex previous video AMD GPU using Zetio on RISC-V and stuff and even writing drivers for such complex hardware, GPUs, AI accelerators, coprocessors, especially if the AMD stuff is mostly open documented but not also not everything. Um, mode switching is done with Atom BIOS stuff. I think the so mode switching CRT output stuff for HDMI display port and stuff. I think it's, as far as I've seen, correct me if I'm wrong, but mostly, mostly hidden in Atom BIOS layers there of virtual instruction set um, interpreting stuff there. Um, so yeah, that is a huge issue there potentially um, or in general and um, Roland uh, Ruckerbauer is also getting annoyed with all those Linux kernel vulnerabilities just updating the kernel for an embedded device and has, has to do it again. Yeah, recurring theme and this, this is just I mean, the, the irony is, hey, it keeps those people's paycheck rolling, right? The more work, the more constant. But security, right? Hey, boss chief, we, we, we have security. My, my job is secured for the next decade to come because there will always be... I mean, I wonder, serious question, maybe all those 
people who are in love with C and C is the only low-level system programming languages, are they in love and their religion of C because it keeps their paycheck paying because they will have ever something to fix. You mean probably they just need the, if they have not, nothing to do, they just look a little bit in their code and find buffer overflows and underruns and null pointer and use after free and stuff. Um, yeah, but again, BSDs are not people discuss in the comments. BSDs, BSDs are I said this before, similar to Linux, just not as ever changing. They're a little bit more stable, but not inherently more secure. Single address space, same only the kernel, just less drivers, less ever changing APIs. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah. Um, on this channel, um, I'm a little bit done. Um, we will have. I'm a little bit done with our Linux distribution, which I should probably also. Um, this video, by the way, brought to you by our company Exacode, right? Um, amazing, <laughs> written in C++, Objective-C and stuff. Um, OCR paperless scan and OCR software and PDF software for uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux and Windows. But otherwise, our T2 open source since 20 years with Rock Linux history and in really good shape with all the Patreons and YouTube membership and all the live streams just the other day updating stuff here and even for myself, even fixing stuff here live on YouTube, right? So T2 cross compiling 18 plus architectures, um, Vulkan, Mesa, uh, Wayland, you name it. Um, really, really good shape, including Risk Five. Of course, we will continue to do this because I will always, similar here, like curl, Linux kernel, there's always some update, right? Um, we will continue this, but I will now really gradually switch to like what we've done previously, hardware isolated, low level stuff for S3 Verge, Voodoo, uh, Silicon Link 3D. Just examples, Martrox, Pahelia, reverse engineering. I have still PowerVR, Curo and maybe newer reverse engineering here on my table. And then risk five. You might ask, why do I work with this vintage stuff, previous videos, because I wanted to get my brain more into the mindset of what is necessary for low-level, bus-mastered, 3 d isolated stuff, not only for the PS3 RSX, but in general for the microkernel. Um, and this old devices, not only fun and one weekend to get something working, but um, due to the nature of simple stuff, you can do this alone on your desk in your basement. And just as an exercise, and we will gradually improve the hardware, I will do ATI eventually um, first old ATI and then newer ATI eventually maybe AMD and Intel and so on and the microkernel so we will have varying, varying uh, topics here to create because I want something much more simple than Linux a uh, microkernel and reusable um, and uh, that is uh, coming here soon to this channel I have more people tuning in that is amazing um, uh, people discuss more space stuff that is interesting. Allegedly some um, satellites run stack machines, Lisp and stuff. And yes, yeah, certainly, and this is also, you can't certainly not run Mars rovers and satellites and Voyager and stuff for 20 plus or so years or 30 years. Um, or the Hubble Space Telescope and stuff um, with Linux and SystemD if you need to deterministically um, switch the backup systems and have the redundancy and self error correction and stuff. Um, what else do we have there? Let's quickly go through this, otherwise the comments always go too long. Um, Roland also spends his time fixing crappy vendor Wi-Fi drivers. Brandy, uh, ben, Bendy writes, Node.js website controls a same device. Why bother with the back and layout engines are hard. Let's go shopping for... Yeah, and um, um, this is probably to the SpaceX stuff earlier. William wrote, layout engines are hard. Let's go shopping for CSS developers. Yeah, I would also say this UI should not even auto layout it, right? For a freaking spaceship control stuff, 
hard code the freaking controls, right? It's not necessary to animate them over the screen and have them fading, freaking fade in and out. Just put the freaking controls there in a way that they don't freaking crash and work like 99.99 period 9% of the time. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, you can, Dr. Schubert writes, you can probably run Linux on a microkernel for this. Yeah, you can do this. There is L4, certainly for many, but, um, and Apple has done that previous video. I made a video, MK, the first Linux microkernel thing there of Apple's open source in the 90s, um, MK Linux. And there is for L4, there is L4 Linux of running like virtualized Linux instances uh, in L4 user space, um, exactly for using drivers or using Linux. Um, and yeah, someone mentioned Circon. There is this Google Fuchsia. We will see if Google in the future will use Google Fuchsia. Future there is Circon for the looked into that, of course. And, and again, Google is doing that for good reason. Google is doing not that not for fun. They do this certainly because internally they are certainly aware that um, there is certain limits and security implications with li using Linux everywhere. Um, old school writes on most function libraries in C. Um, yes, they are. That's an, that's an issue, right? As seen here with curl and systemd and uh, even setlib and stuff. And why not, right? There, it's it's not written somewhere in the ten rules of the Bible that system libraries or compression libraries need to written, be written in C. Sure, we need to re-implement. This is what I meant, right? The whole C infrastructure is basically basically as far as I can see, um, in my opinion, pretty a bit rotten. And this is also why they need to be unrusted, right? Um, and then, of course, we need to have some setlib in Rust and set standard in Rust and stuff and preferably formally very. And is all the stuff a lot of work? Yes, all the stuff is a lot of work. But if we look for the future of civilization, we cannot run another hundred years of stuff on C. Otherwise, we will have in 100 years to come um, security vulnerabilities in, uh, in, in C. In my opinion, we shouldn't fly to Mars with stuff based on C. Uh, we shouldn't even start a moon base or the next space station with stuff in C um, or fly SpaceX rec uh, rockets with, with stuff in C. You want the set standard library there. Uh, you don't want your, your rocket sometimes crashing because of some heap overflow or other buffer overflows in your set standard library. Um, yeah, so um, old school says he likes C because it gives control of memory management. Yeah, but you don't need this control. What you want is you want some text string and you want some let very let variable your text label be some I internationally like i18n internationally lies text look up translate this with formatting string whatever you don't want to free that is a point you don't want to freaking it doesn't matter and uh, maybe nothing should actually be on the stack and stuff um, and uh, this is also why our new stuff we have written portable in uh, lua uh, as an experiment here in the windows and linux version because you can just write local freaking string equals underscore uh, quotes your freaking label and underscore is a function of ours for internationalization in which I find pretty freaking cool. And who cares where the freaking text string is allocated? Who cares where the freaking window is allocated? You want to have some local window equals window colon uh, new uh, curly bracket frame equals whatever something um, comma some attributes and so on and then freaking window show you don't want a freaking uh, malloc struct size of struct some freaking window no you don't want this you don't you didn't want this in the 90s you didn't want this in the 2000s and you for sure don't want to have this in the year 2021 and for sure not in a freaking spaceship um, and that is a problem 
Um, so let's see what else do we have here. That's probably it for this video. Um, if I go through more comments, it takes too long. Um, and um, probably in the future, I need to pay more attention to people who uh, super chat here. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something as usual. I'm honestly curious what you think about this. Leave it in the comments below. Um, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to spread the word. And hope to see you soon for all the next fun computer science and code videos to come.